Good day, my brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm Father Matt Malone, the President and Editor-in-Chief of American Media, and welcome to this uh, live stream tour of our headquarters here in New York. As you know, this week is the Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus. And ordinarily, we would invite you to come into our home to see what we do and how we work and to, to celebrate the Eucharist together. But this year, we're not able to do it, um, mainly because we're still coming back from COVID. In fact, today is the very first day that we have uh, anybody back in the office in, in, in a meaningful way. Um, and of course, we are observing the CDC protocols for our region uh, as we have throughout this pandemic, and we will continue to do so. So you'll see people who have masks and some people who don't and all the rest, but we are following the protocols for our region. I really want to thank you for, for joining us, though, for this brief live stream tour that gives us an opportunity to show you a little bit behind the scenes, what we do and who we are, um, but also to thank you, to thank our benefactors, our friends, our readers, our listeners, um, who are, are the reason why we, we, we undertake this ministry at all. And I want to especially thank our new digital subscribers. Um, you know, since January, thousands of you have uh, subscribed uh, uh, digitally to America. And uh, it's been wonderful to, to have you as part of our audience, part of our family. And I'm very grateful to welcome you here today. I also want to in invite you to send in any questions or comments that you see along the way. Um, I'm happy to take them and address them as we go through. So let's get started. This is our studio. And <laughs> I think I wanted to start here because this really, in three dimensions, represents what America's been doing for the last decade, which is transforming from a print-only magazine to one in which we're producing content across multiple platforms in addition to print. So here in this state-of-the-art studio is where our audio is produced, all the podcasts that you listen to and subscribe to. It is where uh, we do video live streams like we are today, um, special interviews with special guests. This is really the digital uh, heart of our operation. Um, but, you know, we're not doing much in it. It's not very interesting to look at. So why don't we go take a look at something that's more interesting. And um, our team here is following along on this camera. We've never done anything like this before. Um, I certainly haven't. So if I trip on something, or even more so if I trip over my words, you'll know why. <laughs> so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to walk and chew gum at the same time. So this is our foyer. This is the main entrance to America. And um, it might interest you to know that this is actually was inspired, its design was inspired by the rooms of St. Ignatius in, in Rome. Uh, you might think, well, it looks awfully modern. but it. It, but it, the, the exposed concrete and the, the sort of palette of earth tones is all based on the rooms of St. Ignatius. Again, a reminder that we are a ministry of, of the church. We're a ministry of the Society of Jesus. Um, this is a very special room right here. This is the Cosman Conference Room, uh, which is being used for its intended purpose right now. This is named for Patricia Cosman, who was the very first woman and the very first lay editor to serve on the board of editors of America Magazine. Um, and we wanted to mark uh, her, her milestone in a very special way. So as soon as you enter this foyer, you see um, you know, this room named for this historic person, Pat Cosman, who was, um, as I said, not only the first lay editor and the first woman on our editorial staff, but was a formidable uh, publisher and editor throughout Catholic publishing throughout her life. Um, and uh, also a really dear friend. And she was here on the day we dedicated it just a few, couple of years ago, which is very nice. We of course have St. Ignatius of Loyola over there on the wall. And so our staff every morning, then when they come to work, they enter through the front door there off the elevator. And then they come to this place. Uh, and they see this, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well because, it's, uh, because of the lighting, but here etched on the door are the words, go and announce the gospel of the Lord. And that may be familiar to you because it's actually the dismissal that you hear at the end of uh, Mass. So when the priest says the Mass is over, go and announce the gospel of the Lord, um, the, he, you know, he's sending you forth to you know, do the work of God uh, in the world outside of that particular church building. The idea was that when our, when our editors and when our business folks came to work every morning, they would walk through these doors seeing these words and connect what they were about to do as part of our ministry 
with the dismissal that they heard at Mass. So that it, it was a way of, again, reminding them, reminding ourselves always that we're a ministry of the church, that we work for and with the church, um, and have now for more than a century. So this, I would say, is a central nervous system of, uh, of America. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty vast space. It takes up the entire length of the floor here on 6th Avenue between 48th and 47th Street um, in what is called Midtown Manhattan. To our right is the business department. Um, so all of the folks who work on subscriptions and advertising and fundraising and our travel program, um, you can find over there. Uh, and to my left here is the uh, editorial department. So all the folks who create the content, whether it is a, a video or audio or for print, um, you can find on that side of this enormous room, along with the screens that show um, exactly what we're doing at any given moment. Because of course, while we still have a monthly magazine, we are primarily a digital first operation. One of the things that's interesting about having these two departments together on one floor is for the first time in our history, in more than a century, we have them all together. So um, either they were in separate buildings for a long time, or they were in the same building, but they occupied different floors. And having this opportunity to work more collaboratively um, in a group setting is a, uh, has been really, really great for the organization. Um, it's allowed us to build a better uh, team uh, a sort of team spirit, but also to provide a better service to you, the reader, the audience, the listener, uh, the viewer. And uh, I want you to be able to meet a couple of the people who work here. So this is first is Bianca Tucker, who um, works in the business department, is a senior accountant, correct? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so it has been interesting. Um, working remotely um, has been in the beginning, it had been a little bit challenging because we had to um, conform into working remotely, um, but we still had to, thank God, we had the technology to, in order to do so. Um, I'm pretty much excited to be back um, with the face-to-face -face contact um, for the mo emotional support. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the thing that's really struck me was how well you all were able to move to working digitally, working remotely, and, um, and how quickly that you were all able to do it, right, in, in, in time, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I couldn't have been more proud. And you've been in Brooklyn this whole time, right? You live in Brooklyn with your son? With my son, yep, yeah. Brooklyn with my son. He was doing full remote as well. So a little challenge, but we made it work. Yeah, well, that was like for a lot of people, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Well, fantastic, thank you, thank you for all you do for the business department. Uh, this here is Zach Davis and yeah. Uh, you may know Zach because he is the host of, uh, of uh, Jesuitical, which is our podcast for, um, for young people. And, um, and what else do you do here? I am an associate editor and the director of audience engagement and analytics. And I will say I am really excited to start recording that podcast in a place that's not my apartment again. <laughs> that's probably true. By the way, I asked what you did, not because I didn't know, but because they did. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yes, of course. <laughs> right. So now you and you are also a Brooklynite, are you not? I am. I've been in uh, Brooklyn since I moved to New York about six years ago when I started working here. Um, love it. Been in Park Slope with my wife this past year. Um, so uh, I was excited to commute in today. I know I ne thought I'd never say that before, but it was actually good to get off the train near Rockefeller Center, kind of look at the big buildings. Right. Yeah, it's different than the brownstones. It's very different. I found just getting out of bed and taking a shower and putting on a suit meant like I almost cried <laughs> because it was such a big deal like to just get up and go to work in the morning. Yeah, it was really special. And also knowing that I was going to see you all. Yeah, it took probably the five or six times to figure out how to tie this thing again, yeah. but I'm, I'm happy I figured it out. It's good, it's good to see you. It's fantastic. Thanks, Zach. And we can find uh, Jesuitical everywhere that you can find a podcast. That's right. Jesuitical, um, anywhere you listen to podcasts, or you can visit americamagazine.org and search for it there. And of course, it's co-hosted with Ashley McKinless, who's also on our staff. And, uh, and our next guest... Uh, is uh, Tim Reedy, who is the Deputy Editor-in-Chief of America. And um, Tim, you don't live in Brooklyn. No, I don't. I'm one of the few. Uh, I live uh, north of here, up in Bronxville, Westchester County. Okay, and what has it been like for you working, working remotely, trying to manage the team? Because Tim manages the entire editorial department and uh, uh, operationally and, and has been doing it now remotely, like everybody else, for a year and a half. 
right? So I have a family, two kids, and we were at home for a big uh, stretch of the pandemic in the spring, luckily back to school this year. But still, yeah, working from the dining room table, um, you know, remote meetings all day, every day. But the team has been great. I mean, we've made huge transitions in this time. We were just saying we were biweekly before we went uh, remote, and now we're a monthly. And now we're publishing more podcasts, more videos. It's, it's been an amazing transformation, and to watch it while we're all at our dining room tables. Yeah. And, and like so many have said, really special to be back and be able to see each other, right? Because I think uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that when you work as a ministry, when you uh, are engaged in a mission-driven organization, you really become more like family, right? Yes, we're all very close. We're a tight-knit team. And that really served us well when we went into lockdown. We actually worked very well together because we knew each other well. But I think it's definitely time to kind of reestablish those connections and kind of, because that's, I think, when we work best is when we're together and able to kind of collaborate in that way. So what are we working on right now that uh, we can, might be able to tell our viewers about? Well, we're continuing to cover the, um, the news on the Latin Mass, which we heard about a couple of weeks ago. So we have a couple more pieces on that, and that's exciting. Also looking towards this weekend, of course, the Feast of St. Ignatius, July 31st. We'll be promoting a lot of our content that we've done in the past on that. And then looking, you know, there's news out of the Vatican. It's still busy out there. We've, there's a major trial going on right now. So we thought it'd be a quiet summer, but it continues to be busy from the news. No, it, it, it never is, is it? One day, uh, Tim came to me sometime during the, uh, the pandemic and said, all of a sudden I woke up and we were a daily newspaper yes. because we publish exactly. content now every single day, don't we? Yeah. Right. So th yeah, thank you very much, Tim. I really appreciate all your work for us. So, as I said, this is like the central nervous system of the organization, uh, this area that I'm standing in right now. And the reason why um, uh, I call it that is because uh, the heart of the place um, is actually where we're going to visit in just a couple of minutes. But before we get uh, to but that, before we do that, hi everybody, jumping in here, Sebastian Gomes. I'm I didn't the even see it in my peripheral vision. <laughs> I'm the executive editor of audio and video, so I'm behind the scenes on this broadcast. But as Matt said earlier in the broadcast, we actually are inviting you to send in questions, comments, anything you want to know about where America's headed over the next year, which is a very exciting time for all of us, but also for you, our engaged audience. So we do have a couple questions for you, okay. Matt. I'm going to throw them at you that okay. uh, people No would math, like to... I hope. No math, no <laughs> math, I promise. Uh, so this question is from Helen. How might we, as lay Catholics, help further the cause of the Jesuit ministry, particularly that of America Media? I well, know that's lay fair. collaboration is a really important thing for the Jesuits. Absolutely, it is. And uh, so first of all, thanks for the question. Um, thanks for your interest in helping out. Number one is pray for us. Um, we, 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 need, uh, we need that support most of all. So um, please pray for us, pray for our work, pray for the people that we serve. Um, number two, read our content, listen to our podcasts, view our videos. Um, and, uh, and if you like what you see and hear and read, then become a subscriber. You can subscribe digitally, um, or you can uh, also get a print and digital package. Um, uh, at a minimum, that's the best way uh, to support us and ensure that our work can continue. Um, but most importantly, do pray for us and root for us, because um, we need that moral support and spiritual support, most of all. All right, next question comes from Jack. We're looking at options for next year. Our priority is trips with American media. That is a good priority, Jack. Uh, I know a lot of our audience uh, uh, donors, benefactors, really love the pilgrimages that we've right. done in the past uh, that give you firsthand experience on the ground of places like the Holy Land. You know, places that change your life when you really go there and can see those sites. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has yep. and, and different political situations have put a pause on those. So just let our viewers know, Jack included, uh, what are the plans for, for sure. future pilgrimages and trips with American media? Well, I should say, first of all, that the, the pilgrimage program is one of my favorite things that we, that we do and we've started in the last decade. It's being able to travel to all of these different places in the footsteps of Jesus, in the footsteps of St. Ignatius, with our readers, with our listeners, with our benefactors and friends has been a huge blessing for them and for us. Um, so I hope that uh, anybody watching is able to join us for one of these pilgrimages at some point. We have, we have uh, pilgrimages planned to the Holy Land under the leadership of Father Jim Martin. We have a pilgrimage coming up that's planned for Lourdes and for Paris, uh, and one also in 2022 to Ignatian Spain. You're hearing a lot about you know what's going on in the in the Holy Land and in Israel, um, and also with what's happening worldwide with COVID. But right now, all of our plans are on. So uh, all of the trips that we have scheduled, we plan to undertake. Though we, you know, we closely monitor this stuff in a, in in collaboration with our colleagues. But for now, we're going. 
All right, one more question, and uh, again, only because of time constrictions, we're not going to be able to get to all of them, obviously, but thank you to everybody who sent in questions. Please do send questions, comments, and Matt and I will be sure that we respond directly to those, uh, even if we don't get to them in the broadcast. But this, this is a really important question that has come in. Uh, what types of content and topics can we expect America to be tackling over the next year? Obviously, the pandemic, the whole situation has affected, right. uh, impacted our coverage, our editorial you know, perspective on the world, on the church, on sure. those questions that are at the intersection of those two things, which is the heart of our mission. Mm -hmm. What can people expect from America? So they can expect us to continue to cover, uh, of course, the question, uh, I mean, what's, what's happening with, uh, with COVID and our, um, you know, throughout the country. And as you know, the different parts of the country are experiencing it differently. So um, you can expect us to continue to report and analyze on that event, and also to provide some spiritual resources for people uh, who are navigating, um, you know, the, the, those difficulties, um, either, you know, from being sick or knowing people who are, or just, you know, suffering the sort of spout. Also coming up in the in the autumn, we have a really special uh, package of content looking at the the role of women in the life of the church, um, I'm, which I'm really looking forward to. It was a few years ago we became the first. Jesuit journal in the world to produce an issue of the magazine entirely written and edited by women. And um, that's because we made that an editorial priority and, and we're going um, uh, to continue uh, to, to follow those issues and uh, to provide some news and analysis about that. Um, and of course, we're going to continue our coverage of the, the, the country and the churches um, reckoning with uh, race in America, um, which is also an important piece of our, of our healing and, and reconciliation, particularly at this time in the life of America, both the country and the magazine. So uh, as I said before I was interrupted by your questions, which was a good thing, <laughs> um, that we refer to this space as the central nervous system uh, because it's such a hub for the everyday decision making that we, that we make. Our editors meet here every single morning along with their colleagues in the business department to talk about what we're covering that day and what's in the news. But I'm going to bring you now to the heart of the organization, um, the heart of our headquarters here in New York. And you might be able to see our folks hard at work here on the right. As I said, this is the, uh, really the heart of who we are, and, it, and in part because we are a ministry, as I said, of the church. And so all ministries participate in the one ministry of Jesus Christ which is a ministry of reconciliation. For us in communications, that means bringing people together across multiple platforms uh, in conversation, sometimes even in argument, but an argument that's always informed, that's smart, and that is above all charitable. So our chapel here is named for uh, Edmund Campion. And um, St. Edmund Campion is the is the uh, patron saint of America Media. He has been the patron saint of America since uh, 1959. And, um, he, and uh, we have a, uh, an icon of Edmund Campion here. He's the patron saint of writers. And so, um, and of course he was a Jesuit martyr uh, in the Elizabethan persecutions. And our then Superior General of the Jesuits in 1959 for our 50th anniversary, thought that we ought to have a patron and decided it would be Edmund Campion. So uh, this chapel is a place where we can come. People can come during the day, uh, either for mass or just for a, a quiet moment of recollection. Uh, we reserve the, the Blessed Sacrament here. And once a week, we gather as a staff, um, those who are here to, to have mass together. Um, and uh, we also pray for our benefactors, for our patrons, for our friends, for our readers, for people who are listening, people who are watching. Um, and we have collected some of your prayer intentions. You're welcome to send more. Um, we've collected some of them, and they are here in this, uh, in this bowl. They'll be added to the intentions that we have, and will be remembered at our Mass. On Saturday, on the Feast of St. Ignatius, um, which, is a, on a sat which is on a weekend this year, I will come here to the chapel and say Mass um, for our staff, for our, for our board, for our benefactors, for our friends, readers, viewers, and listeners. I used to just say readers. Now I have to say all of that <laughs> because our audience is growing. And um, we're really, really pleased to have you be a part of it. So that's a little bit about the headquarters of America Media. Um, thank you very much for joining us.
uh, on this brief tour and for uh, taking part in this way to recognize the Feast of St. Ignatius. We're going to continue to uh, work hard to bring you the, the content that you expect from America. And we will, of course, continue to pray for you and ask that you continue to pray for us. And so why don't we just take a moment right now and uh, remember um, all the gifts that God has given us um, and uh, offer up uh, our hearts to him. So we pray glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My brothers and sisters, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this tour, and thank you, as always, for your support of America. God bless you, and good day.